driver in front. First time win, Callum Hedge, Ryan Wood. Race win in the 2022 championship. Very cool to catch up today with a couple of youngsters with a very bright future. The Porsche New Zealand scholarship recipients in Callum Hedge and Ryan Wood. How are you both? Good mate, how are you? This is home turf on the Gold Coast now. You're quite away from home. How are you finding living away from New Zealand? Um, yeah, it's been a bit of a change. Uh, I, I lived a little bit on my own last year, but uh, not for very long. So this year was a bit of a shock. I moved overseas and uh, ended up on my own, having to do this whole cooking, cleaning, <laughs> cleaning up after myself gig and uh, got on top of it now and really enjoying living in the Gold Coast. Fittingly, you two, word on the street is, are now flatmates. What is that like? How's that working out? Yeah, I was unfortunately living on my own and then uh, even more unfortunately, I've ended up living with old mate next to me here. So, uh, <laughs> Been of a bit of a change, but it, he's not too bad. Who's the more organised, the cleaner of the pair of Definitely you? Definitely Callum, not <laughs> me. No, I, I'm pretty new to this whole thing. Um, it's been cool, you know, moving over here and having our dreams kind of really coming true pretty early on for us. Um, it's been pretty cool and we grew up together, so it's um, been a bit different living together, I think, and being in each other's back pockets every day, but, you know, we're still mates on and off the track and it's been fun. When you walk into the Giltrap offices there in, in Auckland and you have a look around, they've supported some unbelievably good sports people, not just motor races, over time. How cool is it to be considered now in that group? Yeah, it's cool to be part of the family. I've sort of sort of watched all the Giltrap drivers for a lot of years and every time you go into the office you see the Lamborghinis and you see all your Brendan Hartleys and Scott Dixon's helmets and race suits. So it's uh, cool to have my name alongside them. So. To be driving a Porsche, I mean, the pair of you are in your late teens. That is a little bit surreal for someone not all that long out of high school, mate, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I think we're pretty lucky for how fast everything's come about. You know, we're both kind of taking the same sort of route, the 86s, and then a bit of endurance stuff in New Zealand, and we've ended up here. Um, kudos to, obviously, Porsche New Zealand and Gil Trap Group for making it all happen, and for Earl Bamba to really make these opportunities for us young guys possible, because... At the end of the day, not many people get this opportunity and we're pretty lucky. He's done some amazing things in his career. What's he like to work with, Earl? He actually reminded me of, of a lot of my old friends from, from go-karting. I thought being a two-ton Le Mans winner, I thought he'd be a little bit, a bit, little bit up himself when I first met him, but uh, completely not what I expected. He's real down to earth and will help you with anything. And similarly, in a, in a business sense, he's, he's created um, these racing teams around the world which have potential opportunity for young blokes, don't they, in a, in a pathway sense? Yeah, 100%, you know, he's done a lot of stuff. He's had teams across the globe um, and won some big races, you know. Obviously the Bathurst 12 hour for them is probably their biggest win to date. Bringing a team close to home like Australia is pretty cool for them as well. And to have Kiwi drivers driving for them is pretty exciting. Are you on the phone regularly to him? And what, what sort of expectations are there from someone like Earl? Uh, I try to text him more because whenever you ring him, he ends up talking for like an hour and a half. So, <laughs> so, so you're like, shut up, Earl, go away. <laughs> but uh, no, no, he's all right. He's very cool to work with. Awesome to think that, you know, he's a phone call. Yeah, exactly. You know, after a hard weekend or what have you, you know, you can always give him a buzz or even during the weekend if you have questions. It just helps for someone with his experience or even the lead up to the weekends is probably the biggest thing for me lately is leading up to the weekends, what, what can I prepare myself with? And the team is so professionally run over here that we are always got the tools to turn up there and have a good, good opportunity and have a good crack, you know, and practice one and not have to muck around. Ryan's made the move in relatively recent time. You did it prior to him. And then a crazy awful thing that we want to now just consider in our rear view mirror called COVID turned up. How much did that impact your plans and life in general and so on? Um, well, yeah, it impacted me quite a lot. I was actually going to do the Porsche Sprint Challenge like two or three years ago, but then uh, obviously both my seasons got cancelled and we only did two rounds last year, so it was a bit hard. And then um, they're like, hey, you can just go and drive in Career Cup now, so it's another step up again, and uh, you have to really push yourself and, and drive at your best. How has that been? Because you know, both championships are immensely competitive, as Ryan's finding out this year, but to have that accelerated step puts another level of pressure, doesn't it? Yeah, it's been, it's been real hard this year. Like, I went from last year and the two rounds we did, there was sort of three or four guys that were, that were fast, 
and then uh, jump in this new car this year and I'm like, oh yeah, we'll see how we go. And uh, there's, there's 12 guys that are all within a tenth, like at Darwin I was one tenth or something off pole and I was P11, so it's real hard. You've ridden the highs and lows of this mate this year. Tell me about Townsville. I mean, the way you bolted that weekend together to walk away from that event in North Queensland must have been immensely special in your career. Yeah, it was a very cool round. Had my mum there. It was also my first, first time on a street track, so I was really excited to get out there and fire this thing over a few curbs. Qualified a bit average, and then uh, seized part away from there and managed to stay there, keep the pace up, finish the weekend on a win and a round win. How about this for a first time win as Callum Hedge crosses the finish line and the young Kiwi is home for his first win. Not just the round win, I mean, the way you bolted it together right across the weekend was kind of perfect execution almost, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't like to give myself too much so, so I don't sit up here, but uh, yeah, it was a really good weekend. I was very happy with, with uh, the job I did. My starts were good all weekend. That's something I've been working on quite hard and uh, the weekend all got stitched together. So how do you bounce then from tail and bend? Because that was tough. That was tough for you, wasn't it? O'Keefe and Hedge, a couple of young guns. Did something happen to Callum Hedge then? Did he run wide going through the right-handers? He's off he the road. From second, drop all the way down the back of the field. There could be even further dramas perhaps with the EBM car. Yeah, I'm, st I'm still trying to get over that one. It's, it was quite hard. Like We're there on merit again. We're up into, up into second. And uh, we're going strong, driving away from the guy behind me and sort of going with Aaron Love and um, drive shaft snap. So it was a bit of a shame, but uh, we live and we learn and we know that we can be there for Sandown. You've had two very good rounds to start, but it's been a bit of an introduction to the pressure of Porsche racing. I mean, Sprint Challenge this year has a quality lineup of drivers. You, you began though at Sydney Motorsport Park. Did, is it fair to say when you kicked off at Sydney Motorsport Park that it was maybe even better than you anticipated? Or? Well, obviously we, the biggest thing for us was preparation, you know. The boys give us tools to prepare the best I have in my career so far. So turning up to Sydney, I know I had the expectations of obviously trying to win and, and put on a bit of a performance and we fortunately did that. One and then carried a huge amount of speed down to two. Oh. Woods recovered here and looks racy, trying the wide line around the outside at turn four. 130 k's an hour and Wood will wrestle the lead maybe. Or will he? Sergeant holds on around the outside but runs it wide at turn five and the young Kiwi scrapes through. Well, how's the commitment around the outside at turn four? Massive amount of talent required to do that on cold Michelin tyres and hangs on. So now the team Porsche New Zealand Earl Bamber Motorsport driver in front. In his debut race in Australia, he's been living here for a couple of months now. Hails from the North Island. What a way to kick things off here in Australia. But Ryan Wood scores the opening race win in the 2022 championship. Nice start by the Kiwi. And then obviously on the weekend we had Queensland Raceway and, you know, like being our home round, I was a little bit disappointed walking away with three seconds to take the positive away, getting the pole position and the extra point is going to actually help in the long run. So, um, yeah, we've had a good, good year so far. Unfortunately, only two rounds in, but um, looking forward to seeing what lies ahead. More than just two drivers in that field, right? I mean, you could add Lockie Bloxham and a few others to that, but it does feel like it's going to be classic Aussie versus Kiwi rivalry you versus Tom Sargent. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I feel like obviously if you're watching from the outside, that's what it's like as well. For me, you know, Tom's, I've raced against him in go-karts over here a little bit. And then um, he's a very highly rated driver, six hour win. That's, that's a big feat in its own to win. And then obviously Formula Ford, anybody that wins Formula Ford's pretty highly rated as well. So um, to go up a guy against him like him is pretty exciting and you know, uh, just punch on and see what happens. At the end of the day, I can only do the best I can and walk away with a smile on my face. You are going to go to some very cool racetracks this year, especially Mount Panorama Bathurst. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, obviously that's a track that we all look towards as a young guy. Um, and I was fortunate enough to go there to the Bathurst 12 hour this year to work for a team and um, drove a couple of cars around there and not, not going fast or anything, but just going around there and Callum could probably say as well, when he raced there last year, it's pretty surreal. And it doesn't feel real when you do your first kind of lap there. So I'm looking forward to tackling the mountain in anger and seeing if we can come out unscathed and hopefully with a couple of race wins. Bathurst is a ritual for, for many Aussies, but it is that way for 
Kiwis too. What did you think of it when you went there for the first I time? I thought it was ridiculous to be did honest you? with you. Yeah. Um, I was, I'd just come over from NZ and it was just as the Omicron virus started coming in and uh, they put us in, in like managed isolation just before the race weekend. So our first practice was at one o'clock on a, on a Wednesday afternoon and I got out of managed isolation on I think 11.30 that, that same Wednesday afternoon. So I went straight from the, from the hotel down to the track, jumped in my suit and I hadn't driven a Porsche for about, for about 10, 10, 12 months. And uh, threw me in, said, here you go, mate, have some fun around, around the, uh, around How'd the mountain. How did you prepare for that? How did you prepare I didn't, for that? I, there was nothing I could do. We had no onboards, no nothing, because it was obviously a new team last year. And I uh, just went out there, had a play, and uh, made sure I kept it clean. Epic place though, mate, hey, to, uh, drive, to drive something like this. It was unreal. Like, um, it was a real dream come true. I've been wanting to drive that track since I was about six years old. So uh, it was really cool coming down the Conrod Strait and tip it into the chase flat out. It was really cool for me. Even in a road car, when you go around, pretty eye-opening. Yeah, obviously, I, I went there when I was about 10 with my dad and we were going to a kart race out somewhere out in Sydney and um, we managed to stop in in a little Kia Carnival and I still remember dad thinking it was a one-way road and we're going down the mountain using up all the road and then there's a camper van coming up the other side so it gets pretty hairy even when you're driving around there on, the, on a road day so um, can't wait to drive around there in a race car and see what it's all about. For the pair of you, you are early on the pathway, right? Uh, is the Porsche pathway something that you you know, for you know, even in the short term future, are very are very focused on. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of there's a lot of pathways with Porsche. Obviously, they can take you worldwide, not only just in Australia. So um, it's really cool to have the support not only from Porsche New Zealand and Ilbamba Motorsport, and uh, be able to open up some doors and maybe get some opportunities further wide. Driving is the dream, is the is the focus right now. But you're both at an age and stage where the commercial side becomes vastly important. How are you going with that? part of the whole learning curve. Yeah, well back in NZ it's not, not as much of a big deal, but uh, as soon as I come over here, I started talking to a few people from, from back home that helped and support me. And it's sort of come to realise that nine out of, out of 10 of the things you do is off the track, mm -hmm. and only one out of the 10 things you do is actually on the track nowadays. Um, everyone seems to care a whole lot more about your, your stuff off the track than, than they do on the track. And uh, you've got to really learn about all that and become the complete complete package. Has Callum Hedge changed as a, as a person or are you still the same person but maybe you've you've learnt more about that, that commercial uh, side? I definitely haven't changed, I'm still a Muppet <laughs> but um, it's definitely been quite quite a shock to me learning learning and being amongst all these big trucks, big teams, uh, lots of professional guys so you really got to step up your game and, and act your best. So you're away from home but you do kind of have that support network, I mean there's some, some high calibre business operators within Porsche New Zealand and beyond that, that can help? For me it was a big step up trying to uh, get over here and, and make it all happen and obviously you were part of my journey to get here and it was pretty cool to um, turn up to Sydney and have, have a couple of Kiwi guys on the car um, and obviously Gill Trap Group and Porsche New Zealand it wouldn't be possible without them because they give us the opportunity to come and race their cars and, and support their brand so um, for me obviously looking forward and talking to Richard and everything like that to have him in our back pockets as well helping us out and and like you said earlier on the amount of people that they've helped beforehand um, can just transfer valuable knowledge to us to to make the, the next step possible. Mentors in life no matter what you do are, are invaluable right so Earl is clearly a good one in, in your corner to have Richard Giltrap um, you, you know there in, in an advisory sort of sense and in a commercial sense as well who, who are some of the others that, that are helping along the way? Um, there's a couple of, couple of people from back home that have supported me right from from back in the Sangyongs uh, one of them being a good friend of mine Eric Clark he uh, I was like I don't know how old I was, I think I was like 13 and racing the Sangyong at Pukekohe in the rain and he walked out of the crowd and, and gave me 100 grand. So um, I was like, who is this guy? I didn't even know what to say. And uh, since then he's, he's turned into a real close friend of mine and he comes to quite a few of the races over, over here. So he's a real good bloke to have around. Um, I work quite closely with John Gordon. He's been a real good help and mentor to me as well. And uh, the last person I want to thank as well is Steve Horn from Tasman Motorsport. He's been, uh, he's been a real good help the last year. Who's been in your corner? Getting over here, it was James Marshall. Um, he ran me in the 86 in the Porsche series. So um, he helped m make this transition possible. Um, and we sat there and got a whole list of names to, to give a call and see if they can jump on the Ryan Wood train. So um, I'm 
lucky enough to have Scott O'Donnell in my in my corner as well. He's huge for New Zealand motorsport as well. Another guy that that's helped many people, and and not only New Zealand motorsport, but New Zealand in its own. You know, look what he's done to Invercargill City and everything like that. Um, and then obviously getting over here in Australia, Shane van Gisbergen's been a big help, um, not only in the driving aspect, but just with relationships with guys like Roland Dane and everyone like that. So it's been pretty cool. Word on the street is you've spent a bit of time at Norwell with him too, and I'm sure there's been a bit of fun with that. So you, he's actually been in the passenger seat with you too, is that yeah, right? Yeah, yep. So we spent a couple of days out there and that was pretty cool, you know. I drove an 86 for a whole year and then I drove one out there and just seeing the way Shane operates at such a high level was really eye-opening. It's just unbelievable the, the high, the rate that they drive at is just out of this world, so it's pretty cool. So a couple of guys in their teens, but you've already done so much. I want to peel the, the onion layers back a little bit here. I think it was you know, the chance to drive a cart at Mount Wellington and you've never looked back. Is that about right? How did it all kick off for you? Yeah, well, I don't actually come from a, from a racing family at all. I'm a first generation racer and a couple of family friends of ours had a, had a go-kart back in the day and uh, just went out, had a, had a bit of a bit of a blat around Mount Wellington and uh, I was hopeless at rugby. So uh, <laughs> I decided that go-karting was it. Have the family kind of come fully on board with you since you've made this move? Yeah, definitely. The, uh, all the family back home has uh, started supporting me. They don't, most of them don't really know much about it, but uh, they're all, all trying to learn and ask me and send me a message every, every single weekend we go racing, uh, asking how I'm going, what I'm doing, what does this do, what does that do? And uh, it's really cool to have them supporting me. The pathway to this point to be racing Porsches, you, you drove some important things. When you look at most race drivers' CVs, it's, it's Formula Ford and, and certainly nowadays in New Zealand for, for the both of you, Toyota 86 has become a, a staple for, for races. When you look at, at yours, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, youngest ever race winner, I think, in the history of Australian Formula Ford. And are you the, are you the youngest winner of a Formula Ford title globally? I think that's an yeah, amazing feat. I've got that as well, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't, I don't really, really celebrate or get too excited about, about winning stuff. So if you don't celebrate that, that kind of stuff, do you just channel that energy into the next thing? Like, are you, is that how you operate? You're already eyes on the next thing? Why not, why not stop and, and celebrate that? I don't know, I've just never been a big celebrator. I never do the big fist bumps or across the line or get out of the car yelling and screaming. Uh, it's, just, it's just how I've been. I've always been quite quite flat and, and not really get too excited about things. But uh, obviously you've got to, got to use that energy you get from the, from the winning and you get a bit of confidence and then you can try and carry that into your next event. Have you paused to stop and think about where you are, mate, because the, the pathway here, I mean, it's not easy for anyone in motorsport, right? But it's been, it's been tough for you to, to get to this point, to stitch things together. When you look at how your kind of career started, now you're in Australia and you're racing, that's, an immense achievement in itself, isn't it? Yeah, I think obviously for me, it's been a really hard task to get over here and, and raise the money was probably the hardest thing for me, you know, for, for any young guy moving forward, money's always gonna be the, the hold back. So for me, last part of last year, moving to Christchurch and um, spending the last three to four months down there, really working hard with a tight knit group, group of people like James Marshall, um, Bill Wright and Steve Brooks um, that are, are also loose guys but very clever businessmen and really seeing how the world works not only in a business sense but also the way they socialise with people and how they tackle opportunities and everything like that. So for me getting over here has been a big achievement and um, yeah, moving forward just want to keep ticking off those goals. When did you first start toying with the idea of coming to Australia and how did that come about? Well, obviously, after um, finishing the 86 championship, we kind of looked at different options, and um, the Porsche ladder at that stage was was the real key key target. And um, having Porsche New Zealand and Gil Trap Group proposing that made it 10 times easier for us. So, fortunately enough, had a guy that could buy the car for us in New Zealand um, who backed me in the 86 championship. We managed to win all the races and pole all that stuff, and. Um, just gave me the perfect kind of CV to apply for Porsche New Zealand, so managed to get up. I talked with Callum before about highs and lows of motorsport, right? And you have, you have experienced that too. When you do have the difficult ones, and I think there's a couple maybe in the 86 series, for example, how do you deal with that? Yeah, like Callum said, at the end of the day, that's part of motorsport as well, you know? 
um, you have the highs and lows and that's what keeps you drawn to the sport is um, being able to ride those highs and lows, lows as well, you know. Uh, in the 86 championship, the last round was probably the low for me. Um, leading the championship, going into the last race and everything like that and having a flat tyre was real gut-wrenching. But for me as a young guy, I just knew it's the way you handle yourself after that is going to be the way you determine how you're going to get on with um, further steps and everything like that. So making sure you obviously see nowadays a lot of the, the stuff when people get out of cars is really important. So um, yeah, just making sure my head's screwed onto my shoulders and keeping a level head like Callum said. So this step along the journey for you has been a very cool one, albeit COVID interrupted. Where to next for you? In current, I'm racing Career Cup with, uh, with Porsche New Zealand and uh, in my opinion, might be a little bit biased, but I think it's the, it's the best stepping stone for young blokes in NZ to actually get over to Australia. I think it's our, at the moment, it's our, it's our only real opportunity to get over here and, and race some big cars and get with a, with a really good team and, and learn a whole lot about your driving. And uh, they, can, they can open doors, obviously. Every young bloke from NZ in Australia likes supercars and loves watching and racing, racing in those. But uh, obviously to be driving for Porsche as well, you, there's a whole lot of opportunities overseas that you might want to pursue. So would you stay in this neck of the world or would you head to Europe? Um, it's, hard, it's hard to decide. Like, um, obviously here is, is close to home and you've watched all, all the supercars and Australian motorsports since you were real little. But then, uh, then there's always that little part of you that's like, hmm, I wonder what, what Europe and being overseas is like. Is there a path? for you that you've mapped out short term where you've gone, you know, you'd love to step in and do Carrera Cup like Callum's doing next year. What do, what's the target for yeah, you? Yeah, for me, like we set out a goal uh, after the 86 championship to tick off South Island endurance, apply for the New Zealand Porsche scholarship and get race sprint challenge. And then obviously Carrera Cup being the next step. So um, for me, that's, that's my goal is to short term, jump into Carrera Cup next year and do what Callum's doing this year having great results and winning races, you know. Um, you, as a racing driver, that's all you really want. And for us, we've got to win races and got to be like that because we don't have that much longer, you know. You say how young we are, but it, it moves so quickly now. So um, being able to jump in a car and go straight to the top is, is really important for me, especially. Supercars is quite a lure in this neck of the woods, but are you tempted to go global, to go beyond Australia as well? Personally, it's always been a goal of mine to race supercars and to do all that. Um, watching that on TV has always been the, the coolest thing for me. So um, it doesn't mean that it's going to happen or that's the way I'm going to go. But uh, I think short term, Career Cup and, and see what, what kind of arises. And I was lucky enough to obviously test a supercar this year. Um, and, and doing that made me a little bit more into that sort of stuff. But uh, How was that? Yeah, it was pretty cool, you know, race, uh, driving a car for Triple Eight, obviously being one of the highest teams, or if not the highest team and most successful team in supercars was pretty cool. And uh, having Shane there on the whole day, and it was a uh, huge thanks to Tony Quinn and the Tony Quinn Foundation for making it all possible, because um, yet again, there's another guy making everything easier for New Zealand racing drivers, so it's pretty cool. Scholarship's pretty helpful in that sense. Is that the, the target for you as well? Yeah, I think moving forward next year, I'd love to race for Team Porsche New Zealand again. Um, what they've achieved in the last two years with Matt Payne, Callum and myself now is pretty, pretty cool for such a new team over here as well. Um, and yeah, so that, that is my goal is to hopefully get the Team Porsche New Zealand drive again and uh, really push to get the scholarship, which, is, which will be pretty exciting. Pukekohe has this immense place in motorsport history in our part of the world and globally. I mean, some amazing names have come and raced there and it is now going to close very sadly. How do you feel about that? I was actually really gutted when they, when they put out the announcement. Um, it's it's put my personal favourite track. I've did, I did, I done the most laps there out of any track I've ever driven on and I've, I've also had a lot of, lot of success and a lot, lot of highs and lows at that, at that venue. And uh, watching the watching the V8s come across the top of the hill when you're sitting in the grandstand as a as a young 10, 12 year old, um, it really really inspired me to uh, go and carry on racing. You're going to go to the finale, aren't you, for supercars? Yeah, well, I think we're both heading over, so that's going to be pretty cool for both of us. And I'd love to try race there, you know, before it closes. And I think we're both both trying to get something together. It's going to be pretty sad seeing it go. And for me, it was my first race meeting, first time in a race car. 
um, first crash in a race car, everything like that, and Callum's old race car as well. So, yeah, it's pretty, pretty sad. To finish, it'd be nice to look back in, in many years' time, 15, 20 years' time, at, at what you've both achieved from this moment, right? What do you think you'd like to be, you know, to have ticked and maybe remembered for in a, in a motorsport career sense all those, those years later? Steve Horn actually said to me once, he said, um, don't try and, try and aim, aim low, aim as high as you possibly can, aim for, aim for, the, aim for the top. And I said, uh, I want to try and win Le Mans 24 hour. And uh, that's something I really want to try and achieve in my life. Porsche have done that so successfully over time. What about for you? Is it, is it Bathurst 1000? Is it, what's the, the, the thing you'd love to, to do? Wooden sprint challenge this year is for me <laughs> is going to be, be my goal. Um, anything beyond that, to be honest, will be really cool. You know, I've got to race a Porsche. If it all stops now, I'd be pretty happy. So um, moving forward, I think racing supercars or, or Porsche overseas would, um, doing any races over there on cool tracks or anything like that would be cool for me. I haven't really thought about race wins at that level. So uh, just getting there and being a part of the atmosphere would be pretty cool, to be honest. Your answer is, is here at the end of your nose, but clearly, mate, the hunger burns beyond that. Yeah, 100%. I think for both of us, it, it seems from the outside it's pretty close, but we both know it's very far away from being um, a dream of being a paid racing driver. You know, there's a lot that needs to go into it in the next 12 months um, to all form together. So we're just both really excited to see what happens there. Congratulations to the both of you on what you've achieved so far and we wish you the best with the remainder of this mission and we'll catch up at some point. It's been nice to, to shoot the breeze on this today.